Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the last few months, one of the most commonly purchased and utilized medical device, of course along with the oxygen concentrator, was the pulse oximeter. Along with using it for what it is meant to be, we also had our share of entertainment in the form of some of the viral videos showing the pulse oximeters measuring oxygen saturation and heart rate of some of the non-living things like pakoda, sketch pens, etc. So in this video, let's understand in detail what exactly is oxygen saturation, how a pulse oximeter works. And make sure you watch this video till the end so that you know exactly the reason why those videos had few of the pulse oximeters measuring oxygen saturation and heart rate of pakodas and sketch pens. Before trying to understand about the pulse oximeter, let's just briefly recall about the normal physiology that happens in our body, which I'm sure all of you are aware. The blood gets oxygenated in the lungs and this oxygenated blood reaches the heart. From here, the heart, to be specific, the left ventricle, pumps this oxygenated blood to different parts of our body. Hemoglobin present inside the RBC in the blood vessel is responsible for carrying oxygen in the blood. All of you have heard the word oxygen saturation. Now, what does this mean? In a group of hemoglobin, a fraction of hemoglobin that is oxygenated or carrying oxygen is the oxygen saturation of that blood. Just to give you an example, if a particular quantity of blood has, say, for example, 100 hemoglobin, and if 95 of them are oxygenated and the remaining 5 are not oxygenated or in medical word, deoxygenated, then the oxygen saturation of that blood is 95%. Similarly, if 50% of the hemoglobin are oxygenated, then the oxygen saturation is 50%. Now, an interesting thing to note here is oxygen saturation is not the same throughout the circulation. Obviously, in the arterial blood, where the oxygenated blood flows from the heart to the different parts of the body, the oxygen saturation is higher, that is somewhere in the range of 95 to 100 while in the venous blood or in the blood vessels which carry blood back to the heart the oxygen saturation is much lower for a human body to function optimally oxygen saturation should be between 95 to 100 or at least above 90 and an oxygen saturation of less than 80 can cause serious problems to different organ systems especially the brain okay now that we know what oxygen saturation is Let's look at things which can change the blood oxygen saturation level. Well, the list of course is quite exhaustive and let's not go into the details of each of them. But let's try to understand some simple ways how the oxygen saturation can be affected. Imagine a scenario where all the organ systems of your body are functioning absolutely normally but the air that you breathe into the lungs has lesser amount of oxygen which can happen in case of mountaineering that is at high altitudes or say for example in case of fire accidents so the amount of oxygen that reaches to the lungs itself is lower hence the saturation can be low in this scenario now imagine another condition where the air that you breathe is fairly okay but your lungs are not functioning optimally now what happens, the lungs in this case are unable to transfer this oxygen into the blood vessels and hence adequate amount of hemoglobin are not oxygenated. This is what happened in case of COVID infection, resulting in decrease in the oxygen saturation. Now, the air that you breathe is okay, lungs are functioning absolutely alright. Imagine a condition where the heart doesn't function optimally. Here two things happen. One is that heart cannot pump enough amount of blood into the systemic circulation. Second thing is that heart and lungs are functioning so closely that whenever the heart gets affected, lungs also secondarily get affected. That is the heart is one thing unable to pump blood into the lungs. The second thing is that the blood gets accumulated back in the lungs as the heart is unable to push it forward. So as a result of this, also the oxygen saturation drops down. Now imagine another situation where the air that you breathe is absolutely okay, lungs are functioning fine, heart is fine, but 
a blood vessel carrying oxygen to a different part of the body say for example one limb gets blocked because of whatever the reason is what happens here strictly speaking oxygen saturation inside the artery shouldn't be affected right because it is the fraction of hemoglobin which is oxygenated fair enough but when you check the oxygen saturation in that tissue there is decrease in the oxygenated hemoglobin reaching that area while there is plenty of deoxygenated hemoglobin which is produced over there resulting in decrease in the tissue saturation i hope you understood these four scenarios where the oxygen saturation can be dropped so what happens in case of anemia that is decrease in the hemoglobin content oxygen saturation should not be affected in case of anemia that is because as i told you previously oxygen saturation is the fraction of the available hemoglobin which are oxygenated now here the total amount of hemoglobin itself is low so arterial oxygen saturation is not affected in case of anemia well this is not applicable in other conditions where there are different problems with hemoglobin per se there the oxygen saturation also can get affected but let's not go into the details of those in this video now that we know the importance of measuring the oxygen saturation the next question is how do you do it simple isn't it just prick the artery take the arterial blood from it and analyze it well this is true it is done in case of a test called as abg or arterial blood gas analysis and this actually gives us the most accurate value of oxygen saturation but this is not practically possible every time to monitor the oxygen saturation because we cannot keep picking the artery to take the blood out of it so what is the practical and non invasive way of measuring the oxygen saturation boom the answer is the pulse oximeter pulse oximeter is a device which is most commonly connected to the finger or sometimes to the ear lobe and measures the oxygen saturation of the tissue underneath oh sketch pen ki heart beat hoti hai vande matram sathiyo ye dekhiye स्केच पेन की हार्ट बीट और उसका ऑक्सीजन लेवल ये जो भांड मीडिया ये डरा डरा कर ऑक्सीजन कम हो गया लेवल कम हो गया ये झरोना है झरोना देखो स्केच पेन की 200 सौ हार्ट बीट आ गई और 98 एट ऑक्सीजन लेवल पहुंच गया मित्रों ये कहाँ का ढोंग हो रहा है ये कहाँ का पखंड है रेट ऑफ आर बी there have been some viral videos claiming the pulse oximeter to be a scam and that uh, it measures the oxygen saturation and even heart rate of uh, some of the non living things like pakodas or sketch pen now why does this happen the reason why such videos became viral and such false claims of it being a scam were made was because people were not aware of the exact mechanism by which a pulse oximeter works now obviously as this is a non invasive thing pulse oximeter cannot directly measure the amount of oxygen which is present over there so it does it by an indirect way which can at times be tricked a pulse oximeter has two sides one side has light emitting diodes and the other side has sensors the light emitting side has two diodes one of which emitting red light with a wavelength of roughly 660 nanometer and another one emitting infrared rays with about 960 nanometer wavelength the absorption of red light and the infrared light will vary depending on the oxygenation of the hemoglobin which is present in the tissue beneath oxygenated hemoglobin absorbs more of infrared light and lets the red light pass through while deoxygenated hemoglobin absorbs the red light and lets the infrared rays pass through so the ray which has not got absorbed that is the ray which has got transmitted gets detected in the sensor now what does this diode do it emits infrared ray and then red ray and then both are off this entire cycle takes place for about 30 times every second so depending on the transmitted ray which has got detected in the sensor it makes the calculation and finds out the amount of oxygenated blood present in the tissue now what happens with every pulse there is fresh amount of oxygenated blood reaching that tissue so with this variation in the increase in the oxygenated blood reaching there 
it also makes calculation and find out the heart rate that is the pulse rate so as you can understand the pulse oximeter does not directly measure the amount of oxygen it simply makes this calculation based on the amount of transmitted rays reaching its sensor so in case if there is some non living thing and it makes some differences in the amount of absorption and transmission of these rays it is obvious that the pulse oximeter will get confused and make some calculation and show the saturation accordingly and this is what caused all the confusion and people claiming the pulse oximeter to be a big scam for the same confusion bpl company has actually come out with a clarification that pulse oximeter is fooled to assume that the tissue through which it passes the rays is always a human body which is either the finger or the ear lobe and its entire calculation is based on this assumption so it is obvious that when you keep something else a non living thing it is bound to make this mistake and as a result whatever the values it gets based on the amount of transmitted rays it is going to display that value well of course there are a few conditions where the reading of pulse oximeter can be falsely high or low but let's not go into the details of that and uh, maybe we can have a separate dedicated video on that meanwhile if you found this video informative make sure you give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and family and for more health and wellness related videos subscribe to this channel thank you